Hello, my friend. Max Licato here. Israel's under attack. Boy, just that announcement was enough to heavy our hearts. I wonder if you, like I, have been unable to turn away from the news reports. At this recording, well over 1,200 Jews are dead, a similar number of fatalities among the Palestinians. And what about those barbaric acts against children and elderly? And then a hundred, over a hundred people taken hostage. Innocent Palestinians are trapped in siege-weary Gaza. Skirmishes are breaking out in northern Israel with Hezbollah. Missiles are still streaking the Israeli sky. Iran is suspected as complicit in the attacks. And then add to this the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia. And doesn't the world feel so fragile, so wounded, so worried, so weary? How are we supposed to process this? How, how are we supposed to respond? How, how do we cope with all this chaos? Well, Jesus told us this would happen. In Matthew 24, he said, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And then he said, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. That's verses 6 and 7 of 24. Did you know of the past 3,400 years of recorded history, humans have been war-free for only 8% of them, 268 years. Cain was violent first, but we're violent still. In the last few decades, the world has seen violence escalate to, to new levels. In this phrase that Jesus used, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, well, this suggests a unique kind of war. It's a, it's a, it's a Hebrew idiom for a world war. And Jesus' statement here is that when world wars begin happening instead of just local wars, that's a signal that the end of the age has begun. And we've seen this twice in the last century. The conflict was so universal that it earned the phrase world war. You know, more people died from war in the 20th century than in all the other centuries combined. We live in this ever-present, fragile world. It seems like we're just a press of a button away from nuclear disaster. You know, Russia has invaded Ukraine. China is threatening Taiwan. Israel feels pinched by Hamas to the south and Hezbollah to the north. You know, I don't have a national security clearance, but I can Google. And so I Googled the question, how many nations have nuclear weapons? The answer, nine, nine. According to one report, the warheads on just one U.S. nuclear-armed submarine have seven times the destructive power of all the bombs dropped during World, World War Two, including the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan. <laughs> Max, you're just full of good news today. <laughs> you know, actually, I have some good news. Great news. And here it is. Jesus, the one who warned us of these days, will deliver us from these days. The birth pains will continue, yes. And the frequency of deception and destruction and division it's going to increase, but Jesus will protect us. He will protect us until He comes, and He will deliver us once He comes. For that reason, Jesus could say that phrase, see to it, that you're not alarmed. Don't be done in. Don't be worn out. Now, how can we do this? Well, first, make sure you're saved. Jesus Christ died on the cross for sinners like you, like me. And the scripture says he does not want anyone to be lost, but he wants all people to change their hearts and lives. 2 Peter 3 and verse 9. Have you surrendered your heart to Jesus? If not, do so. He loves you. You were not made to experience the coming chaos. We are nearing the end, and you do not want to face the final hours with no Savior. Tell him that you are a sinner. Tell him that he is your Savior. And the scripture says, Everyone who calls upon the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Next, pray for peace in Jerusalem. 
You see, Israel's special to God by covenant. Jesus was born there. He died there. He rose from and will return there. It's no wonder that the tiny nation of Israel has been the most disputed property in history. It is the staging ground of God's story of salvation. So pray urgently for the nation of Israel. And then lastly, don't panic, please. Don't panic. Don't let this chaos weigh you down. You hold on. You hang tight. You hold fast to scriptures like this one from Psalm 37. Wait and trust the Lord. Don't get angry. Don't be upset. It leads only to trouble. Verse 9. Evil people will be sent away, but those who trust in the Lord will inherit the land. In a little while, the wicked will be no more. You may look for them, but they will be gone. Verse 11. People who are not proud, the meek, will inherit the land, and they will enjoy complete peace. The wicked make evil plans against good people. They grind their teeth at them in anger. But the Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day is coming. Yes, Jesus said, see to it that you are not troubled. See to it that you're not troubled. Let's do just that. Get right with God. Pray for Israel and don't panic. God is still on his throne and he's still coming to take us home. Amen.